full is that it is anointed it is fireized it is loaded and it has the capacity to put you on your throne of enthronement i want to encourage you as you watch this message watch it with faith in your heart because god will impart some great measure of anointing in your life yokes will be broken chains will be destroyed walls will crumble as you watch this message i want you to watch it with faith in your heart and trust god that every situation in your life will turn around for good in the name of jesus amen happy new year so if the world is missing it you can be a zionite and you miss it that is why we're emphasizing on the seven mountains Let's look at what God said in Deuteronomy concerning families. Deuteronomy chapter 7, 6 to 8. We are here as the salt of the earth and the light of the world. The world should be able to learn how to walk in piety and in righteousness by looking at how we conduct our activities. You know, guys, when I was growing up, there is a specific time you cannot come back. Once it's 6 p.m., if you fail to come back to our house, you sleep. Now, you can't just invite your friend to our house without getting clarification from my father. And the clarification will include what, who is his father? Who is what? The mother. What do they do for a living? Are they born again? By the time you have vetted these questions and you feel that they are right, then you have enough gusto and confidence to go meet my parents. That was how we were raised. You see this one, some of you, you are still under your mother's apron string and you are bringing gay friends into the house. Why wouldn't you cut the head of your mother for rituals? And that is why God is raising this commission to be able to correct the malady and the dysfunctionality, dysfunctionality that is operating in that sphere. If the church, I told you, when, whenever there is a widespread uh, uh, um, problems in the society, two places you should look at is what? The family and what again? The, the church. And that is why I don't. I, I can prophesy to you from from January first that that's my office. It flows like I breath. But you see, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna mold you into what God wants you to be because part of what we do here is to coach you, anoint you, release you, so you can go and duplicate the kingdom culture across the seven mountains. Lift up your hand and scream. Give me this mountain. I don't like the way you're shouting. Deuteronomy 7, 6 to 8. Time. Oh God. Look at what the Bible says. For thou and holy people, unto the Lord thy God, the Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. 7. The Lord did not say, the Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you are more in number than any people, for you are the fewest of all people. Eight. But because the Lord loves you, some say the Lord loves me. Come put your hands on your chest and say, Jesus loves me. Because he will keep the oath which he has won unto your fathers. Had the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen. Talking about the covenant he called with Abraham and his family. Now, let's look at three key, three keys of having an effective family. And the aim of the family is for us to raise godly seeds that will influence nations for God. The aim of family, having family, son family, scriptural family, is to raise godly seeds. Look at me, in this time and space, if you leave your parenting to chance, you are going to cry one day. I say that again. In this time and dispensation, if you leave parenting to chance, you are going to cry. You won't cry in Jesus' name. Now, how do we, how do we impart positively to the family mountain? Number one, marry appropriately. According to God's laid down rules and commandments. Number one key, you must, now this is for singles, you must marry appropriately. And one law in marrying appropriately is that you must discern spiritual and physical, emotional, philosophical compatibility. Look at me, the Bible said in 2 Corinthians 13, 6, it said that the light and darkness can never be, can never be together. 
can never be together. If you want to raise a formidable family that can be a voice for God across the terrains of the family mountain, you must marry right. If you're already married, then you must be able to operate by the terms of the marriage operation. I dealt with that last Sunday. I'm not going to throw more light on that. Number two, set a goal to raise godly seed for God through sound parenting. Set a goal to raise godly seeds for God through sound parenting. You must sit down to your tax to make sure that your eyes reaches every area, especially those of us that have children. You should not leave parenting to chance. You must see that your eyes, their health, their academics, their, fr their friends, what they do, you must be their friend. You must be able to make sure that your eyes reaches. This is how to raise a good family that invariably that will affect the society at a larger scale. Can I get an amen? Number three. Mentor and influence your children to become God's weapon for global change. Mentor and influence your children. You must mentor and influence your children to become God's weapon of global change. And part of this mentorship is to make sure that they fall in love with God. Please, in your morning devotions, get your children involved. Get your children involved. Thank God for the creativity of the devotional. Now, what I do, I give them, they read, and then I explain, I ask questions, we pray. But at least they know, I, I, I should do the time, this one knows you are doing today. And you know, that, get them involved. If they can be able to have the fear of God at this level, then that would be the beginning point of a greater manifestation and a greater blessing. Help me tell somebody, get them involved. God wants to raise godly seeds so that we can be able to influence nation. And it begins with us who are Zionites. In our family, what kind of children do we raise? In our space, what kind of next generation are we raising? We must, as a matter of practicality and intentionality, begin to sit down and mentor accordingly so that we can be able to influence the family mountain. The second mountain I want us to look, I want to take two, then I'll take two. There are seven, so I'm not rushing. My, my drive is for you to understand it and know how to engage it and the Lord will bless you. So I hear you. Governance. Governance. That's politics. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government, some say government. Hey, talk to me. Short, short, government. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mary God, the Everlasting Father, the prince of peace. One more time, scream government. All right, Proverbs 29, verse 2. Proverbs 29, verse 2. Proverbs 29, verse 2. Can we read like Mass Choir? One to go. When the righteous, I, I didn't hear you. One to go. When the righteous are what? Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Can we read with understanding? One to go. When the righteous are in authority, meaning God wants the righteous to be where? God wants the righteous to be where? When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear it to rule, the people, that's what is happening to our nation. But I believe that God will give us deliverance in 2023. Now, hear this. The truth remains. That the church must change her perspective regarding politics and governance, or we will become irrelevant in today's world. I say that again. The truth is that the church must change D 
their perspective regarding politics and governance or we will become irrelevant in today's world. You know, many a times there is this common saying that politics is a what? What politics is what? Now look at me. If you keep saying that politics is a dirty game, then you will employ, you will vote for somebody who will go and pass a bill, and very soon they will start collecting your wives for free. Yes. Now look at the gay movement. Look at all those oppressions. They are the fallout of malfunctioning, malfunctioning democratic system because every government reflects the ideas and the mindset of the leader. I might have somebody here. Now look at me. Hear this. If we are going to take over the political mountains, now the church must empower and recognize the Daniels and the Esther generation. Daniel was one young man from Zion who remained relevant across four administrations. Each king that comes to power looks for Daniel. They will look for you. I don't like the way you're talking. I said they will look for you. Was it not Esther? Because she was in the inner court of king's operation, she was able to stop a bill that could have annihilated the whole Jews. She was in government and she used her authority well and that bill was terminated before arrival. The reason why we are suffering in Nigeria is because Christians call politics dirty game and the guys who, who we have empowered, they go there and pass all manner of bill and they are rubbishing you. When the wicked is in power, the people mourn. Are we not mourning? The other day, everybody, I, 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 what, how much did you uh, Five liters of oil was so how much? Huh? Five thousand. And we are suffering and smiling. But I tell you something, 2023, there will be a revolution. And part of you, some of you here, God will send you to, to be a governor, a legislator, a senator. If your faith can carry it, lift up your hand and shout a better. Amen. Amen. Politics is not dirty. If politics is dirty, go there and wash it. Go there, what? I want to tell somebody here. Some of you here have political mandate. Some of you here should be governors. Some of you should be senators. Some of you here should be able to rule and reign for God. He is waiting for somebody that can go and speak on the behalf of the church. So this is not a time to say, no, let us leave them. Because if you send a man who hates Jesus... He will go there and pass a bill against Jesus and your faith will be scrutinized. Am I talking, am I talking to somebody here? That is why this church is a diplomatic church. You see, my psyche and where I'm going in the ministry, that is why I, I like what God is doing here. You must be truly called to me to understand what I carry. If you, if you see into the next 10 years of this ministry, you know that a time will come, the least person here shall be a governor. A president is an usher. Because I, I was in my room the other day, a man of God, Jeremiah, called me. He said he's been on the mountain for 50 days. That he saw me. I said, What did you see? He said, Prophet, I saw where you were serving bread to kings. And I said, You saw where I, I carry instrument. Even if you even if you came here, Paul, I would change your mindset. This is where we are going. This is my ministry. This is our call. Anywhere you see men sitting on throne, Prophet Toku is involved. And the man of God said, I, I saw you. He said, man of God, you're not even meant to be a pastor. I said, I wasn't a pastor in the first place. I know my office. He said, I see kings. And he said, you know what? I saw, once you get one king, he brings his community. When the kings come, if you don't have the king's bread, you didn't hear what I said? With, if you are here eating my bread, you are a king. Oh, you don't, you don't know you're a king? Rise your feet and make some noise. So, we are going to raise the Esther generation and the Daniel generation from Zion. The Bible says, out of Zion shall proceed the law. We are the lawmakers. We are the lawmakers. 
There are things that must not be going wrong in the society when you are around. That is why God is giving us the instrument mandate. So from here, we put fire in your there. You go to the mountains and subdue and rule. Somebody whose amen will reach to heaven, I see you subduing, I see you ruling, I see you manifesting, I see you taking territories. Your voice will not be ordinary. Favor will chase you down. The grace of God will come upon your life. I hear your amen, you are connected. That is why if you are little-minded, you can't survive my ministry. If you are here for gossip, this is not market women church. That is a church for you. This is a church for those who have royalty in their, in their heart. You don't want to die ordinary. You want to go to the grave when you have offloaded. You go to the grave empty. You want to wound the earth with impact. I'm talking with somebody here. That's the kind of man called to pastor. One of my daughter. I pray for she, maybe she's watching me now. Gone near. I said, Daddy, can you imagine your daughter? I was I was interviewing Welsh government. I said, That is a tremendous mandate. He said, Papa, can you imagine? And I said, How did you do? He said, Papa, it was over. Father, they have scheduled me again to interview another government. I said, Listen to me today. That is the call. If you are coming to this church to have a farm. Just, you just want to have a farm or to have one store and one car. Move, move out from here. But you want a generational impact where Jesus will be glorified through the efficacy of your representation. Then you are in the right place. I am raising people that are going to occupy the seven mountains and review Jesus as a Lord and a governor and the earth. Are you part of that generation? Stand to your feet and shout the better amen. Praise the Lord. So let's stop saying that the church that is, uh, is dirty, we cannot. And we are, we are, the Bible says, when the righteous is in power, what happened? Show me, show me that scripture, Proverbs 29, verse 2. When the God wants the righteous to be in authority, God wants the righteous to be the president, God wants the righteous to be the senator, God wants the righteous to be a local government chairman, He wants the saints to occupy the political mountain. And that is why God has called me and given me the mantle to rule. How can the church influence the political mountain? Are you understanding what I'm saying? For the first time, I'm expanding on this. Three keys on how to influence the political mountain. Praise the Lord. Number one, the church must encourage their Josephs, Daniels, and Esther generation to solidly get involved in politics. The church must encourage their Josephs, Daniels, and um, uh, Esther's generation to solidly get involved in politics. The church must encourage. We must be able to mentor men and women who can go out and mentor and, and you know, go into serious politicking. The next number two, they must be trained and solidly grounded. They must be trained. Naturally, they should be part of a church like this, where we teach people from the lens of divine ordinance on what it takes to rule and to reign for Christ. Can I get an amen? You know what I'm seeing? Most of you in 10 years' time will be governors will be senators, will be local government chairman. Your voice will be heard. I hear your amen. You are blessed. Praise the Lord. So I said number one, the church must encourage their Josephs, their Daniels, their Esther's generation to solidly, to solidly get involved in politics. The next one, they must be trained and solidly grounded. They must be trained and solidly grounded in biblical principles and insight on how to represent God's purpose on the mountain. I think that again. They must be trained. They must be trained. 
and solidly grounded in biblical principles and insight on how to represent God's purpose on the mountain. When people come to me and say, prophet, I want to be this and that. I sit them and I vet them. How do I vet them? I vet them on two keys that God gave to me. Number one, love for people. Number two, love for God. If a man must go to the political mountain and part of their holistic mentorship and training is to vet and decide if this guy has love for people. Any leadership that does not have profound impact on the people is a malfunctional leadership. So I, I, I ask them question, I check their love level for the people. The next thing I vet is the love because any man that loves God invariably will love the people. So these are the two things and other things that God is teaching me on how to scrutinize and raise me. I see a lot of them. They are calling me on phone. You know, 2023 is around. I've been known for this for years. Ah, prophet, we are coming. One called me and, and said, ah, ah, do I, should I go for, for House of Assembly or should I go for this? I said, call me. In fact, I want you to come to Abuja. He's flying in. Number three. Number three. They must have sound character. Sound character. If we're going to influence the political space or sphere, we must produce men and women that have sound character, proven leadership ability, right? They must have sound character, proven leadership ability. And that is why if you run away from leadership position or leadership assignment from the church, you will not go far. Look at me. Men lead the nation from leading the sheep. If you trivialize the sheep, we never trust you with leading. If I follow my trains of thought and I follow me, if you trivialize leading the sheep, God will not trust you with the grace to lead. Everything you do in church here is leading the sheep. If you are too classy to lead that, produce results, now you are telling God you are not qualified to rule and reign. So the church serves as a ground for preparation, for mentorship, for tutorship, for impartation, so that you can be able. And it isn't better that you make your mistakes in the church and to make the mistakes in the public space. So when you are here, how God proves that he loves a man is not by taking away things from him, it's by adding things to him. You didn't hear what I said. Should I say it again? If more assignment is given to you in a church, it is a sign of divine promotion. And it's a sign that you are faithful. How God measures divine promotion is by giving you more. To the guy that traded with five talents, he gave you what? He gave you what? He gave him five more. So when God gives you more, it is a sign of divine promotion. You know, when you come to church, you begin to, you don't want anybody to worry you. You want to worship God at your own space. You are not ready for global oppression. Everyone that must keep the nation must first keep the sheep. Was he not in keeping the sheep of his father-in-law that he kept the nation? Moses? Was he not in keeping the sheep of his father that he kept the sheep of the, he kept the nation of Israel? It has always been like that. He, that is not saying, God, I want to rule on the mountain. And the little, little things in the house of God, you are trivializing them. My, my friend, you are going nowhere. You are going nowhere. Because if God cannot trust you with those five people in your department, give you a blueprint, you can't hit it with impact, you can't lead people. Now, how are you asking you to make you a captain, a captain in the mountain? You are, you are playing, you are joking. Are the graces I've seen in life as a result of the ones that I've, I have used judiciously and it has expanded them. When we started this ministry, Mama Fizzy Sound. Eh? He that feeds his son can feed his life. You don't understand. That is why no, no matter how jagger jagger 
shattered, shattered and shattered your life is. If you come to mama with one word, she will put you. Because back in the days, when we come to service, we used to start at 8 o'clock, we come by 6.30, mama will fish drum and connect sand. This woman you are seeing here. I didn't marry, I didn't marry beauty with empty head. I didn't marry what? You may try all this guy in there. Let me see what you can do. And it's not by grammar. It's by result. Proven. Proven. Measurable. It is easy to walk into a system and be giving advice like, uh, like Westerhoff. You know, you don't claim it, Westerhoff. One time coach. <laughs> he didn't play well. He didn't play well. And if I give you ball to play, you will faint. It is easy. It is easy to come into a place. And this thing will have been like this. Oh, look at me. Look at me. If you want this rolling, put your hands. The Bible said that he that puts his hands to the plow and look at back. It's not. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I feel like God is about to groom the next generation of attackers. Now, he's going to begin to do that by little, little things he tells you to do. If you jettison them and trivialize them, then you postpone your journey in the wilderness. But if you humble yourself and say, Lord, today I am keeping sheep. I know all things being equal. I will soon keep the nation. If you had me say, I hear you. So, they must have some character. Proven leadership ability. Not in the space. You must start in the church. The church is the hub, is the place, is the training place where God will vet you and impart you with the grace that you need. If you can't do it here with humility, you will go there, you will fail. And then, you must have plans that tends to meet people's needs. You must have plans that tends to meet people's needs to bet national transformation. This word, you are going to be hearing it more often from my mouth. National transformation. So, you must have sound character integrity. You must have leadership ability. You know, you know, you know the way people don't know what church is. The way you married your wife is the way Christ married the church. And he paid the price of the church with his blood. So, God has made church his embassy on the earth. You want to process visa for greatness, start from the church. You want to do what? Process what? Visa. For what? You start from where? From the church. So we're not just coming. If you are called to sing, sing well. Mama was in Choma Jesus' 50th birthday. The woman spent money millions. If you see her duplex, one of the best in her village. The, the equipment she bought from China is almost over 100 million. A woman, and I had to her testimony, she was hawking things in the city of Port Huh? Eh? Oh, Mama put. Oh. Mama put Jehovah Jesus with barrow. She was hawking, but she never knew that she carried potential. She was serving Mommy B. I don't know if you know Mommy B or Potter God. She was in her choir. She was her lead singer. Choma, man, Choma. What you do, we are two or three are gathered, is something you should do before millions. The, pro the question is are you going to be faithful doing it until your day breaks? We are too arrogant a generation. Too classy. And that's why we fail, we fail very classically. The little things we do with honor consistently is what produce the overall glory of tomorrow. That woman uh, that was hugging today is everywhere. She has gone to house on the road. What's that, what's that concert? She has gone there three times. Do you know there are musicians in Nigeria till they die? They will never climb that pulpit. This is you are doing in church and you are doing guy. So expect the pastor to beg you. You don't, you even the one after every church, you come and so say, say, Pastor, thank you for bringing me to come to church. I saw the duplex. Powerful. I had to bring that woman. You should, you should keep her almost like five million. That woman. That woman, she has exploded with Hebrew song. Show mama. No be, the, no be grace like the grace. Now praise like the praise. Oh, this is one that is changing everywhere. I don't know if you heard that song. No be grace what? Now praise like the praise. Oh, people are dancing. TikTok, everybody carrying it. A woman that was selling food. And you think you end like this. Rise to your feet. 
I believe you've been blessed by that word of enthronement that came your way. Suddenly in my heart, I believe that you